Hello everyone. Hope everything is fine with you all. Let us start with today's class on the topic Our Changing Earth. You must have noticed the frequent earthquakes which are being reported these days in our country and other parts of the world. Have you ever thought about the causes of these movements? Is there something which bakes inside the earth? Yes, there certainly is. It is the crustal rock which breaks. You would be surprised to know that upper part of the earth on which we live is broken into several pieces and these pieces are known as lithospheric plates. These plates are continuously moving but the rate of movement is very low just a few millimeters each year. For example, a giant tectonic plate under the Indian Ocean known as India-Australia Capricorn Plate is breaking apart at about 1.7 millimeter per year. Such movements can trigger millions of years of devastating earthquake. But why are these plates moving? You have studied in the previous chapter about the lower mantle, which is in liquid form known as magma. It moves in a circular manner like boiling water due to high temperature which prevails inside the earth's surface. This causes the lithospheric plates to move around. And because of these movements, the earth's surface vibrates. These vibrations are called earthquakes. Let us learn more about the earthquake with the help of a diagram. Here in this diagram you can see two lithospheric plates and their boundaries have been shown. This is one lithospheric plate and this one is another lithospheric plate. They are moving in different directions which you can see in the diagram. Suppose at this particular point rock breaks. What will happen? Very simple. Vibrations will take place. This point is known as focus. So you can say the point where earthquake starts is known as focus. Now come vertically above the focus. This point is known as epicenter. Do you know? The intensity of the earthquake is maximum near the epicenter where the greatest damage takes place. Subsequently, the strength of the earthquake decreases as we move away from the center. This is clear to everyone. Any ideas about how scientists measure an earthquake intensity to know whether it is very devastating or not? Let's find out. This is the picture of seismograph, which is used for measuring earthquake waves. And this is Richter scale, which is used for measuring earthquake's intensity. One of the important points to notice that an increase in one point on Richter scale indicates that the force of the earthquake is 10 times greater than the strength of the previous one. The earthquakes of intensity 6 and above are very destructive. Okay, can you tell me where we should take shelter during an earthquake? I am very much sure most of you will have same answer. In the open ground. Very true. Besides open ground, we have various other safe spots. For example, we can hide under a kitchen counter, table or desk. We can stand against an inside corner of wall. One important thing. You should stay away from fireplace, areas around chimneys, windows that shatter, including mirrors and picture frames. Most importantly, you should spread awareness amongst your friends and family members and face any disaster confidently because earthquake cannot be predicted 
but its impact can certainly be minimized if we are prepared beforehand. Like earthquake, volcanic activity is also caused due to the movement of lithospheric plates. A volcano is a vent or opening in the earth's crust through which the molten material erupts suddenly. For example, Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa and Mount Fujiyama in Japan. Let us try to understand the volcanic activity with the help of a diagram. In this diagram, you can see the uppermost layer of the earth called crust has been shown. Can you find it out where it is? It is located here at this place. Below crust, we have mantle layer. Here we have loads of magma known as magma chamber. The hot molten magma melts the crust and form a narrow passage through which magma comes over the earth's surface in the form of ashes, gases and water vapors. This narrow passage is known as vent. Hope this diagram is clear to you now. From the given explanation of earthquake and volcanic eruption, you must have understood that the movement of these plates causes changes on the surface of the earth. The earth movements are divided on the basis of the forces which cause them. The forces which act in the interior of the earth are called as endogenic forces and the forces that work on the surface of the earth are called as exogenic forces about which you will study in the next class. Till then study hard Meet you in the next video. Thanks everyone.